<laughs> What's up, everybody? Andrew Alvedra's professional bull rider, and we got Ezekiel Blue Mitchell, El Azul. <laughs> What's up, Blue? Nothing much, man. Just hanging out, hanging out. All right, man. So we're going to get into this, friend. We're going to get deep. Not too deep, but I just want people to understand and see the real you. You know, I want to see that, yeah, they may see you smiling, you know, they may see you happy all the time, but you had to work for that, huh? You had to yeah. find that. Oh, yeah. You always got to find stuff like that. It comes from different places in your life, but everything def everything that you go through in your life defines who you are and uh, what you're going to be. Um, but you can't let your past define who you'll be as a person. You just have to learn to continue to grow from it. That's right. So in a nutshell, who is like, Ezekiel Mitchell. I mean, like I've known you since high school, man. And I remember when you first came up to me, I already knew you were just, boom, you caught my attention. Mm -hmm. So who is Blue? I mean, I guess that's just it. I, I've always seen myself kind of as a, a humble person, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the people that actually know me know that that is pretty much true. But I do have this, uh, I guess, this kind of the swagger about me that kind of I don't give a care about what anybody else says about me or thinks about me. I'm just me, you know, uh, and that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I'm a freaking small town country boy. Uh, didn't grow up with much, and I just kind of just made a way for myself. Fake it until you make it, and then I mean, <laughs> here we are. Hell yeah, man. I love it because, like, what, what people don't understand, man, is that, like, yes, you know, you're in this position right now in the PBR, and, like, right now... You're the attention grabber. You're strapping ranked bulls. You're interacting with the fans, man. Right now, you're like, you're in the process of becoming a PBR icon, man. And for me to watch it and see it happen through you, it's awesome. So basically, what I'm asking is like, man, how did you put yourself in that position, like, to where you are now? Like, like let's start over, you know? What did you do? You know, it, it started really early, really early on. Um, just being a kid, and I remember being really young and remembering if anybody got me normal clothes for Christmas or anything like that or if it wasn't like I always told my mom always told my family if you want to get Ezekiel anything for Christmas you might as well just buy him a horse toy or something because he ain't gonna want nothing else so they'd uh try to buy me normal clothes and I remember saying like when I opened it like that was like that's probably the most ungrateful things I've ever said in my life I was just like what am I gonna do with this <laughs> you know so uh I always knew I wanted to be a cowboy, and this is what I want to do. And my dad, obviously, he wanted to be a cowboy, which if you ask him to this day, he's going to tell you I'm a cowboy, rich or poor. You know, I might not have ever been able to afford to have horses and everything like that for myself, but I've always carried that cowboy spirit, you know. And that that's kind of cool with the whole Be Cowboy campaign with the PBR, too, because I've seen that in my dad a long time ago. Like, he, he always – he knew he was a cowboy, you know. He dressed mm -hmm. apart, you know, and – um, he's just a cool dude and pretty much from there um, that was when being a cowboy first got instilled in me and knowing that's where I wanted to go I knew at that point in my life I don't remember a time in my life where being a cowboy wasn't where I wanted to go with my life you know and um, and from there it was just trying to figure out how to get there you know and there was definitely a lot of bumps and bruises and trials, trials and tribulations all man. the way all the way to all the way to to this day you know and everybody sees everybody sees just what you see on the outside but exactly. nobody nobody ever understands like the mental the physical struggle like there's people out there that are like i, I was one of these kids too especially before i was like man like and i was getting on pbr bulls in texas like that were bucking guys off and like I, I was riding, I actually rode a bull that hadn't been rode in the PBR at all before me, and I rode him before anybody else on the PBR did. How old were you during this time? Uh, I was probably 18, 19. Like, right whenever I first started catching gears, like I was riding stuff that guys on tour wasn't riding. I was like, man, when I get on tour, it's going to be easy. It's going to be a wrap. Like, yeah. they can't ride these suckers. <laughs> I know I can. I but, love it. Like, until now, you don't realize how much – and mentally and physically and emotionally draining that it is. Oh, man, I remember when we were at the Western Sports Foundation and just talking to all those successful people, you know, they put around us, it it made so much sense to me, like, man, how come, like, just thinking about bull riding, you know, just being successful, you know, the obsession, why is it exhausting? And like you said it right there, they don't know. Mm -hmm. They only see 
where you're at. They don't understand what you went yeah. through. And I love that, man, that how your your ground, like your backbone, you know, came from your dad. Like, yeah, he may not have had, you know, he may not have been fortunate enough to get horses, but mm -hmm. I'm still a cowboy, you know? Yeah. And that's how I saw my dad, man. My dad was in the oil field. He, I mean, we grew up, you know, around racehorses, but we weren't really cowboys. It was mm -hmm. a small town, you know, we had a couple racehorses, but I saw that work ethic in him. I saw the humbleness like you just described yourself mm -hmm. as, and that's cowboy, man. And I feel like when people understand that, it's not about wearing the hat. It's about what you do with your actions, you know? Mm -hmm. And pretty much like what here I want to understand is, okay, yeah, you know, you had your you knew you were a cowboy since day one. You knew you were going to come on the PBR and make a huge scene. Did you not get to that position you wanted as soon as you wanted it? Or how do you see it? Oh, most definitely. You know, <clears throat> I did not get to where I wanted to be fast enough in my, like, now Now that I've now that I've went through it and I've, I've seen everything, like, I'm starting to slowly but surely appreciate the fact that I'm coming into it at this point in my life. But, you know, you remember whenever I first started really getting serious about bull riding and wanting to be on the PBR. I had met Jess Lockwood. I think I'm maybe a year older than him, or we might be the same exact age. I'm not sure. Mm. But I remember seeing him, and, like, like I had just graduated high school or whatever the year before, and I was like, man, man he's living my dream. Like, I wanted to be <laughs> fresh out of high school, on tour. Like, I want to be that superstar that started when he was 18, you know. I wanted to be that kid that, by the time he was 17, everybody was talking about, oh, we just can't wait till you mm -hmm. turn 18 so it's you can go ev pro. Every rider's, like, goal, man, like mm -hmm. in the PBR at a young age is be that young kid that cracks it out. And then stays there. Exactly. Like, but was that your journey? No. Like, <laughs> shoot. I mean, to be honest, in high school, I freaking barely could ride a freaking crippled milk cow. <laughs> you know, um, it was I, – I, I could ride, you know, but it was never any consistency. Like – Say I, I'd make one like the fir my first year riding bulls, uh, like my fifth bull ever. I got on this bull that my buddy Bryce Rido had got on, and uh, you know Bryce, mm -hmm. um, he he had got on him whenever he was still riding bulls. Uh, he got on him at a open rodeo the weekend before, and and bucked him off, or he hung off the side of him to get a score or something. But a big big red bull. And like they bagged that trailer up to the uh, we're at Mutt's, and they bagged that trailer up, and he's like, uh, he's like, anybody want to get on my Red Bull? And everybody knew Bryce, and at that time Bryce was the this stuff around there, so they were like, hey Bryce, uh, anybody want to get on this Red Bull? And Bryce was like, no. -uh. So after Bryce said no, everybody said no, <laughs> and here I am, I'm like this 15, 16 year old kid, like no experience at all, and I'm like, all right, I was like, yeah, let me get on him. And everybody's like, they're like, they're laughing. Like, they're they're thinking, like, this is about to be, you know, there, there's times that people laugh and they're like, yeah, this kid's about to get cracked. You yeah. know, he's he going to get welcome to the big leagues pretty much. Mm -hmm. And, like, I jumped out there and snapped him. He was two big jumps out there and around the left bucking. Like, they, Bryce says it's still one of the rankest bull rides he ever seen me make. You strapped him. Oh, I strapped him. Oh. Rode, rode the dog <laughs> piss out of him. Like, like <laughs> and, like, at that time, I didn't even know anything about getting off or anything. Like, mm -hmm. I literally just opened my hand. He freaking kicked me out the back door. I did a backflip, landing on my knees, freaking. And I look right. up, and everybody's, like, cheering. And I'm like, I didn't even realize that I right. had done it. Like, I didn't realize I'd even rode him far enough to consider it a bull ride. Like, I was just, like, my body was automatically moving yeah. and reacting to and, it. And that's why I noticed about you, too, man. Like, I remember when I first met you, like, I knew you had this confidence. You had this flair. And I remember there's an old story, you know, I know we're getting a little off subject, but yeah. I heard a story about you, man, where someone said that you got on 20 bulls in a day. In a day, you got on around 20 bulls. Is that correct? Oh, that's been multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah, that's been multiple times. Yeah, see, times. That, that's what people don't understand, man. And this is why I love, I want to get into this. People think that, you know, get on once a week or once every other month. You know, some guys only enter like once a whole month you know and people don't yeah. understand you're not gonna build that skill i don't think you're a gifted bull rider i don't think you're a talented bull rider i don't like those words mm -hmm. i believe that god gave you the tools to where you can apply them to your craft but you had to do it that was all you yeah and everybody's past different like you you're like uh like a bona fide like let's be real you're a gym rat dude like, <laughs> you will get on a lot of bulls too but like you're a gym rat, but like that was my gym for some mm -hmm. reason. That's what God put in me. It was like, I, I guess somebody told me one time, it's like it takes an hour to learn how to ride a bull. 
And I was like, okay, I've been to the practice pen for multiple hours, multiple times. He was yeah. like, no, nah, no. Nah. He was like, it's taking those three second tries that you made here, the five second route you made here, the eight second route you made yes. here, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And then when all those, when all your rides equal up to an hour, that's when things will start clicking for you. So I was like, man, I got to get to my hour. I'm like, and I never knew when that hour was. I never kept track of it, exactly. but I was like, that I still don't feel like that hour's here. Right there, right there, man. What you were focusing on is in this book called With Winning in Mind. I love that book, man. With Winning in Mind, and it talks about not worrying about the outcome, but your focus on the process. Mm -hmm. And I think you did that subconsciously, man. Yeah. Like you were so obsessed with bull riding. All you knew was bull riding, you know? Like, fuck the gym, fuck the diet, you know, I'm just gonna bull riding. Oh yeah. And I love that, man. Like with me, it was different, you know? I didn't grow up in a cowboy family and I remember we were watching PBR and I knew I wanted to do that. And my dad was like, well, look at that dude's arm. Who arms do you think it was? Uh, probably Valderon or Adrian or Adrian Marias. Yeah, man, Adrian. One of those big suckers. <laughs> so at that time, you know, we weren't educated in bull riding at all. But I saw that okay, he's in physical prime condition. I got to get at that level. I have to get that physical condition to be at that level. So I really put in a lot of like work ethic in the gym. Mm -hmm. Not knowingly, I should have been getting on more bulls. I mean, I got on a shit ton of bulls, but nowhere near 20 a day yeah you know where, where do you get that confidence man just to for for our viewers out there listening man like because it's hard you know when you're like the underdog around all these people you admire you know and look up to and then there's that big you know that big ass red bull in the bucket shoot mm -hmm. how do you get the confidence to step up and say send me i'm the one man you know um like me and my dad talked to uh a lot I mean, about the whole choice for me riding bulls, and he was like, man, he was like, and this this is the craziest thing ever, man. Growing up, my dad was always like, no bull riding, no bull riding, no bull riding. Like, he knew I was going to be a cowboy. He knew I wanted to rodeo. He was like, no bull riding. We, he was like, try bareback riding or saddle bronc or roping, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I, I dabbled in that stuff, too, you know, and they came along. We had a play day at uh, the cowboy church or whatever. And um, I got on the steer for the first time. And after that, my bull riding, uh, I rode that steer pretty far. I was like, man, dad, I love that. Like, I loved it. Like, I was like, I loved it. And he was like, he was like, all right. He was like, let me pray about it. Oh, no. Actually, what happened was I tried to enter another association. Jay Campbell, uh, Boudreaux Campbell's dad, had an association. And I was like, man, I called, him, called in. I was like, hey, can I enter the steer riding? And they were like, well, how old are you? I was like. I think I was, yeah, that's when I was 16. I was like 16, or about to be 16. He was like, he was like, oh, he was like, you're too old, or no, I was 15. He was like, you're too old to be in the, um, steer riding. Yeah, in the steer ride, and you got to be in Pee Wee Bulls. So I was like, okay, uh, let me call you back. Hung up, called my dad. I was like, hey, dad. He's like, what? I was like, hey, I can't ride, um, steers. I can ride Pee Wee Bulls, though. He was like, what's Pee Wee Bulls? It's like, well, the way he explained it to me, they're just like in between steers and big bulls. And he was like, all right, let me pray about it. And he was like, all right, look. I love it. He's like, God told me to let you go. I so love it, man. from there, and it's hard to make a long story, long story long or a short story long, but that's whenever I was like, when God told my dad that it was cool and I had prayed about it and really knew I loved it, I was like, man, there's nothing that's going to ever stop me from wanting to achieve what I, I want to achieve and there's nobody that's going to tell me I was wrong about what I had picked for myself you know because exactly. at that point like I had still claimed I was going to go to school and be a vet but at that point I that looking back now that's the point in my life where I was like so why are you going through this like I'm sorry to cut you off no, man, you're good. I just get so like I get in on it man like whenever you talk about like how your dad man and like how he br brought you up and you want to be a cowboy and how you know, your confidence comes from that trust in God. Mm -hmm. it, you know, that confidence is you have so much trust in him that you're not worried about what's coming. Mm -hmm. You have so much trust in him that you know I'm going to be great. Yeah. And I love that, man, how it goes back to your roots. And this is the stuff that people don't know about you, mm -hmm. man, because you're, you know, you have flair. You're a great person, a humble person. But, man, to hear this, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And that's inspiring as fuck, man. I do really mean that. I'm yeah. not bullshitting. I didn't know that. Holy shit, man. So, like, 
Well, it was pretty much like, yeah, you know, you have confidence. That's great. Yeah. But confidence fades and goes. Oh, yeah. So whenever you were, I remember, you know, I've known you since high school. You know, I've mm. seen your trials and tribulations firsthand. You know, those days where we would just save nickels and dimes, you know, rubbing two quarters together, you yeah. know. How did you get through that mentally? Because I know you you fought through it mentally a lot sooner than I did. You cracked out, what, 2000 and... 16, 16. Yeah, I didn't yeah. crack out to 2000. But this year, UTV, 2020. Yeah. What did you do mentally, man? That's what I really want to focus on is how did you push through that barrier? You know, I got to say, like, God placed a lot of, like, cool people in my life to, to show me, you know, that I, I could be better, you know? People that seen things in me that I couldn't see in myself. Like, I remember one of those first events I went to, uh, J.T. Moore, good friend of mine, extraordinary bull rider. And at that time, he was an extraordinary bull rider, too. As long as I've known J.T., he's always been a great bull rider. And um, he's like, uh, I'm like maybe two months into trying to ride bulls and probably not even been on 10, 15 head of bulls, you know. And, like, he watched me ride this jump kicker that Jay Campbell had at one of those deals, and I rode him, like, seven and a half seconds. But, like, a miserable waller and hop skipping, like, honk. Mm. And JT. And for, sorry, for our viewers that don't know what wallering and hop skipping piece of junk is, man, that's pretty much a bull that has no rhythm, has no, no timing, no, no timing, me. has no idea what he's going to do. So you're pretty much just hanging on, right? Yeah. So go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and JT was like, he was like, he came to me, he was like, man, he was like, bro, he was like, that was cool. You know, he was like, oh, if you if your parents would let you get on bulls for a month straight, he was like, you'd be better than me. And at that time, like, I had him and, like, Pistol Priest and some other guys put up on, like, this pedestal because when I watched him ride, it was like, yeah, and Keyshawn Whitehorse too, but mm -hmm. they all just oh, rode yeah. so good. Rain cats. And I was like, man, I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. And then whenever he said, like, I guess that's why, like, I really dove into like trying to get on a lot of bulls, and that's where my confidence came from. Because when he said that, it just pushed me. Like, I wanted to be as good as him or better than him, mm -hmm. you know. And like, I hung on to that, and I still like hang on to stuff like I that. I love it, man. You you manage your environment, and I'm yeah. a full believer in that. Like. When you surround yourself with people who have the same mindset as you, mm -hmm. you're going to grow, man. Oh, yeah. I heard this saying, you know, like, you're going to be the average of the five people you hang around, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, there's a hand, there's a hand, there's a hand, there's a hand, there's a hand. Guess what? You're going to be a hand. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what a hand is, a hand is pretty much a badass bull rider. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to talk about it. You know they're Just a, a badass cowboy in general. Exactly. Yeah. And... That's what you did, man. You surround yourself with positive people who had the same mindset as you. I love it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you got through those tough times because I bet those guys held you accountable, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Not, and it, it was at that point, whenever I really got to hauling with them guys real good, they were all riding good. And I was not about to be the guy that everybody hated because I heard stories about guys that sit there and mooch and freaking mm -hmm. just want to rodeo and they can't get anything. I was like, I mean, I refuse to be that dude. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be that guy. Like, if if we're all, if everybody's finishing first through fourth in the car, I want to be first through fourth. You exactly. know, I'm not going to be that guy that's sitting in the car all alone. If you got five people that can fit in the car and you're the fifth person that can't freaking get a bull rod, I'm not going to be that dude. <laughs> I remember... Um, I was hanging out with Jacob Spencer, man, badass bull rider. And I remember we were traveling, and I was like, heck, yeah, man, let's tie for first. And he was like, fuck that. I ain't tying for first. They're going <laughs> to split the points and the money. We can get first and second, though. <laughs> and just hanging around guys like that, man, even I saw, like, they have number one in their mind. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I want you to do the best, and you want me to do the best, but we still have that human instinct, you know? Oh, yeah. I want to win. It's, def it's definitely that. Like, and, and I feel like that's also what drives you, and that's what drives me. It's like I thrive. I thrive in a competition setting. Exactly. Like if we went in the gym right now, like you're in 10 times better shape than me. Let's just be <laughs> real. You you work at it really good. But I guarantee you, whatever you do, I'm going to do. If you're doing it right, I'm going to make sure I'm doing it right. Or I'm trying to make sure I'm doing it better than you. And by the end of the workout, man, I might be gassed as hell like, but, like, when we work out in there with Scrawny, like, me and Scrawny and, and Derek comes in and helps us work out, I'm like, 
I'm trying to do everything correct. I'm trying to do everything right. I want to do it better and faster than everybody else, but I want to do it correct. Exactly, man. And this goes back to that saying where it goes, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong you're room. You're in the wrong room. You're the fastest guy in the race. You're in the wrong race. Now, if you surround yourself with people who are faster and smarter, you may not be the smartest in there anymore, but guess what? Your time will get better when you run, and I promise you, you will gain so much knowledge. This is, this is, going, in, this is going through a broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. Business, bull riding, football, whatever everything, it is. Everything. everything in life. Manage your environment. You know, hold each other accountable. You know, like this year, I'm so freaking pumped, man, that we're going to travel together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about how, like, my work ethic and your mindset you collide that shit bro holy cow and this goes out to anyone who's watching this man find people who have the mindset you want and having that obsession you know people always say i'm sure you've heard this oh man he's really passionate about that that's great he's passionate well no guess what i'm obsessive mm -hmm. and now when i throw the word obsessive around people don't understand it's usually seen as like a bad thing you know yeah. like, oh he's obsessive about that you know what's he doing with his life he's too obsessed about that well, that's what we are. That's what eagles do. We are obsessive about the objective, and we're going to focus on the process, and when the objective does become finished, we're going to make another one. We're goal chasing, baby. I mean, if you think about an eagle, if you think about them hunting in the wild, have you ever seen how an eagle go and pick up a fish? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. yeah. You, know how, you know how crazy you have to be, like how crazy these animals are locked in? You're talking about a fish that's underwater, that's swimming and moving. And they're locked in on their objective. They're obsessed with the fact of eating. I love it. They they know they have to eat to survive, or they have to eat or get this fish so they can feed their young that's back in the nest. They have to be set in on that like that objective. And that's that that's what we are. We're eagles. That's we're right, all set man. in. We're we're trying to feed ourselves and we're trying to feed the people around us. Exactly. You man. know. But I more it. so you gotta feed yourself before you can feed the people around you. You have to, man. Like it goes back to that saying, you know, you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. You teach a man a fish, he'll eat for eternity. Yeah. And I'm a full believer in that, man. Like today Scrawny told me the coolest story. There was a race between two wood choppers who were going up a mountain. Who could chop the most wood? Well, they started going. The first one in the first fifteen minutes, he was sharpening his tools. And guess what? He beat the guy at the end. And the whole pretty much the the reason I told that story is because he was sharpening his tools. He was preparing himself. And like you said, that's what we're doing, holding each other accountable again. And I know I repeat this. It's just because when I repeat something, man, I don't feel like people understand it because it took me so long to understand it. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, if I hang around these guys, it'll be okay. And I start hanging around the elite, you know, the men who test mediocrity. I oh, love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, being, being in that locker room it, and every level of the PBR – and every level of the sport that you move up, being in those locker rooms will show you really quick how your mentality isn't where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Like, like watching Joe say and Jess, it irritates the piss out of me. <laughs> and you can put this, I don't care, this and go on the podcast. It <laughs> irritates the shit out of me because that's where I want my mindset. Exactly. I know exactly where my talent level lies. I know I've been, I've been there. Like I, I know where I, what I can ride, and that's every single bull that's on that fucking tour and that's like that is, that is the honest to god truth but those guys have mastered the art of freaking letting their mind work for them instead of against them like these guys are freaking freaks of nature like it never seems to waver and instead of freaking backing out backing up in a corner when they're pressured oh they're gonna fight their way out mm -hmm. like if you watch that world title race last year between them oh shit <laughs> that was freaking phenomenal if you watched a rookie class race last year we all cracked under pressure at the finals mm -hmm. it goes it goes to show experience too but yeah. like like that's where i want to be I, I, don't, exactly. I don't i don't like i said last year i was like man winning the rookie of the year it's definitely a goal of mine it's mm -hmm. on my bucket list you know but that's not my ultimate goal exactly that rookie of the year title don't mean shit mm -hmm. if I win a world title. And see, that there's nothing wrong with saying that, man, that like how Jose Vitor and like Jess Lockwood, I feel like a lot of guys, you know, don't want to speak about it openly. It's not that you're jealous of them. You want to be no, in that I want position. That. I want you, that position. Yeah, you want to be in that position, and so do they. You know, it's a, it's a race. It's that's, a dog-eat-dog -dog world, you know? That's my spot. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I think. Like, what, what I crave, man, like watching you and just just talking with you here, man, is that, 
you have a mental game that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. People think that you're just laughing and joking. And what I'm getting through this interview, man, your perseverance is out the window. The will to say, no, I'm not going to fucking quit. I've worked too hard to get here, and I'm going to keep on going and going and going, man. Dude, you have a fucking superpower. I always tell people, this is my biggest thing, I always tell people, they're like, what would you tell a young kid? What would you tell a young kid? My my thing that I figured out now is in a world full of no's, be your only yes. yes. Be your only yes. Because there's going to be people that are going to knock you down, drag you through the dirt, tell you you ain't supposed to do this, you ain't supposed to be doing that, you don't deserve where you're at, you don't deserve this and you don't deserve that, blah, 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 that's here nor there. And they could be hating on you or they can be speaking what they really feel. But in a world full of no's, you have to be that one yes for yourself. That's other, right. than that, other than that, you're, you're, you're going to be living what everybody else wants you to be. You're going to be that failure. You're going to be that person that fails because they don't want you to be. Look at J.B. Mooney. They told him, they said for years, and it's funny because I was just watching the video a while ago, said for years that he would be the best bull rider and never win a world champ. I mean, world title. Mm -hmm. I and remember did, that. Did he, did he ever, he, he never wavered in his ability and what he knew he was capable of. Oh, man. It's crazy, man. And we all have that. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's listening to this, whether it's bull riding, football, business, I want to get this point across strong. We are creators of reality. Anything that we picture in our conscious mind, we could bring it into fruition. We are like superheroes, man. Mm -hmm. And I say that, you know, don't take it literal, like we're not going to be flying, but who knows? You know, 300 years ago, you know, they would have said this right here. No, that, that's not possible. But guess what? Now we have it. I mean, they got jetpacks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> think about it, man. I mean, we yeah. are so capable more people think about. And that's what I love. It's not about bull riding. It's not about, you know, being successful. Like, yeah, it, th those are huge major role factors, what we're chasing here. But this is the game about life. Mm -hmm. This game here about life is what we can do to interact with people, build relationships, you know, show humility, love, gratitude, thankfulness. And if we continue to pass that on, man, we are creating an empire of eagles. Go back to that childlike mindset, just like you said right there. Mm -hmm. Be your only yes. How can when a toddler's beginning to walk, it falls and falls, but that toddler keeps getting up. That toddler doesn't know nothing. That toddler doesn't know English, Spanish, whatever language it is, but for some reason that toddler knows, I still have to get up and walk. I gotta be like everybody else. It's, it's the same thing as like, you can't be the, the, the fastest person in the room. Yeah. If you watch a toddler and you, you like, I got a lot of siblings, yeah. so like the older that I got and like the more siblings that we had, like you would notice each kid would kind of learn how to walk a little bit faster than the other. They'd learn how to walk just because they see everybody else in the house walking. <laughs> so they want to walk. like, And like people have to know like whatever you're doing in your life, you have to want to walk for yourself. You know, they're not they're not thinking about, you know, like nobody ever tells a toddler that he won't be able to walk. Exactly. Because they're going to strive to do it. Like, and there's never a thought in their mind that they're going to fail at it. They just get up. Because they walking. see other people walking. Yeah. They know I can do that. They walk blindly. So <laughs> how come like growing up, we just start beginning that we can't achieve stuff? And that's why I love about you. You have Ezekiel Blue Mitchell that childlike mindset and it's beautiful man mm -hmm. that's your superpower i appreciate you being here man i've learned so much i'm gonna have to have you on again yeah, like this to do part this, two. this this wasn't we gotta, enough we gotta, we gotta expand this that. wasn't enough man and to close it on out ezekiel blue mitchell this is andrew alvidris we are goal chasing let's get up let's kick ass Let's get after it. Let's get after it, guys. Yeah, Thank you, appreciate guys. Appreciate it, brother. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> hey, we got awesome. we got coronavirus tested, so we, yeah, we we're good. good. We're good to shake. We're good. <laughs>